Enter Shikari have been consistently one of the most interesting bands in British rock and metal for over a decade now. Although before their last album The Spark was released I was not a big fan, after that album I gave their other stuff a go and was completely converted. Their music is this really great blending of different sounds and genres, especially post-hardcore and electronic. With their last album the band headed into more electronic, post-punk slash new wave sounds, something that polarised a lot of people wanting more of their heavy a sound. But with their new album, Nothing Is True and Everything Is Possible, the band claimed that they were creating an album that blended all the sounds of every album together to create what is essentially the definitive Shikari album, albeit one with the ugliest album cover in human history. The album is undoubtedly the strangest album the band have ever done. The band really crammed everything they've done before together to create this weird mishmash of different sounds and styles, while at the same time pushing themselves into new horizons. The opening track, The Great Unknown displays this perfectly with its very house sounding piano which leads into heavy thrashing guitars and an incredibly anthemic sing along chorus. The band's influence from rave music is very evident all throughout in the punchy and bouncy synthesizers as well. Frontman Raoul Reynolds sings these simple yet effective lyrics about the disorienting nature of the unknown. Raoul's vocal performance is one of the best on the album showing a blending of the aggressive shouting you expect from him and the more melodic falsetto sounds heard on a lot of their predecessor. Crossing the Rubicon is an arena pop rock track similar to songs like Live Outside or The Sights from their previous record also, to the point where at points it does feel very much like it could have just been an outtake from that album for better or for worse. The usage of the very bombastic cheesy 80s synthesizers gives it this very glam rock sort of sound which I think suits the band really well. The track is one of the most upbeat and positive tracks on the album and tells the story of Julius Caesar's is charged to cross the bridge over the river Rubicon. The very triumphant lyrics give it a very huge anthemic feel. This sound and style is heard multiple times throughout the album, especially on Satellites and The King, which easily could have come from The Spark. Satellites is probably my favourite song on the album, with one of the catchiest choruses the band have ever written. Instrumentally, it's a highly emotive, explosive and bouncy track with a fantastic blending of vintage synths, modern day pop sounds and distorted guitars. Lyrically, it's one of the most beautiful tracks Rao has ever written. Written about being afraid of feeling judgement and being able to show affection and be yourself. It's a track that I find more and more powerful whenever I listen to it. The King is a track that I was not a big fan of when I first listened to it but it's one that's definitely grown on me over time. It's a bouncy, upbeat yet aggressive track about revenge. I also really like the use of trumpets in the chorus, it's probably one of the things in the track that makes it stand out. The first single released from the album The Dreamers Hotel is one of my favourite tracks on the album. It's one of the albums heavier with Rao basically shouting all the lyrics in a way that almost sounds like he's leading a protest. It's this incredibly angsty, fury-driven track which is simultaneously familiar for the band and also unlike anything they've ever done before. Lyrically it's very strange but Rao writes almost comically and poetically about how we all want to live rose coloured lives in peace but we're too busy fighting to allow it to happen. With Waltzing Off the Face of the Earth Part 1 the band showed his blending of post hardcore and baroque music. It's one of the weirdest songs the band have ever done but at the same time it's not completely unexpected. Rao essentially raps much of the lyrics in the song which he's described about being about the precariousness of truth in an age of master C. It's one of the tracks where I think the composition and production work is really, really strong. Rao produced the album himself and did an absolutely incredible job. This album is superbly produced and composed. This is also shown off on both parts of Marionettes. These tracks show the band's heavy influence from club music. The first part is much more filled with danger and this very unnerving sound accentuated by Rao's high pitched and very raw singing. On the track Tina, the band showed that their heavier sound isn't lost and they create a song that in a lot of ways could have easily been on their first couple records. Has that heavy post hardcore slash metal core guitar work blended with the rave electronic sound. The track is easily the most hard hitting and aggressive track on the album with some of the best production on it too. Rao sings these heavily aggressive lyrics about the stunting of four and the powers that be controlling the people. The album also features four songs which almost feel like long interludes than proper songs. I think they're pretty hit or miss as well. Apocaholics Anonymous is probably my least favourite track on the album and although I think instrumentally is really 
really cool. I find the vocal effects quite obnoxious. Reprise 3 is a cool little callback to a recurring line from their first two records, but it doesn't really feel necessary at all and could have easily just been put as a coda on the previous track. The other two songs I do actually really like, especially Elegy for Extinction, which is this really beautiful, fully orchestral track performed by the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra. While its placing on the album was very confusing at first, I do think it fits well where it's placed and it's a really beautiful song. This new Enter Shikari album didn't click with me straight away, but I found myself growing fonder of it every time I listen to it. It's exciting, aggressive, catchy, and at times incredibly heartfelt and beautiful. Rao's production and lyricism is some of the best of his entire career, the band's performances are all top notch, and the album is definitely full of some of the best songs they've ever written. It's the perfect album for the current time we're in and definitely one that is helping me get through this shit. Hopefully the November UK tour actually goes ahead and I can see them again, but if not, at least I have this album to listen to and cry a bit to. I'm going to give Enter Shikari's Nothing Is True and Everything Is Possible four and a half stars out of five.